This is what Batman Arkham Knight looked like when it first came out nearly eight years ago. But this is what it could look like if we get a remaster for the game. That's right, we're back with Batman Arkham Knight in 2023, and if you've been a fan and been watching since 2015, well, I need you to scroll down and hit that thumbs up button to show that you got your veterans card for this channel. Let's try to get the video here to 1,500 likes. Come on. Now, we're doing all this today because the incredibly kind folks at MSI sent over, first of all, a computer tower known as The Meg, which is awesome, but also a graphics card. They sent over a 40 series graphics card, the GeForce 4070 ti so big shout out to msi for doing that and when i got that upgrade for my pc i figured you know we want to jump back into one of my favorite games of all time but push it beyond its limits and that's kind of the name of the reshade that we're using here from digital dreams his patreon is going to be linked in the description box below i highly suggest that you check it out if you want to see this game overclocking essentially and looking like it's coming out on the playstation 5 and the xbox series x it is the beyond all limits mod and look how good this game presents itself now the rain effects the lighting and the ray tracing it's unbelievable throw an rtgi in there which is from pascal glitcher also a Patreon linked in the description box below. And this game looks unbelievable. I don't think we were ever gonna disagree on the fact that this game stands the test of time against many games that come out today. But with these mods thrown in there, and then of course having that beautiful 4070 Ti in my rig, my goodness, does this game look amazing. I also just love jumping back into Batman Arkham Knight. Having any excuse to do so is fine by me. So big shout outs to MSI for giving me a reason to wanna jump back into this game because it's so incredible. I mean, the gameplay is unbelievable and it just continues to get me so excited for what Rock said he's going to be doing with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League in May of this year. I mean, that game is gonna be unbelievable. If it's anything, anything, like Batman Arkham Knight, man, we are in for a treat. Again, having these mods just really adds to it. Look at this, look how crazy this is, man. This game just controls so well. How the hell did they add a car into Batman Arkham Knight, into the Batman Arkham franchise, which is something that they had never done up until this point, and have it drive better than a lot of racing games that are coming out these days. It's unbelievable in my opinion. Rock City, seriously, the folks working there are a bunch of wizards. I don't know how they do it. Bleak Island is always my favorite to go to when I'm playing Arkham Knight because it has probably the most visually impressive portion of the entire game. And that is of course right here, Chinatown. I mean, the lighting in this part of the open world is unbelievable. And again, even if you're just playing the normal version of the game, even if you pop in a 4070 Ti on your MSI tower known as the Meg, and you play this game on max settings, this area looks incredible. But when you crank things up beyond their limits, when you use some shader mods, when you use ray tracing mods, my goodness. Let me just walk down this street for you and let you admire the lighting effects. Look at Batman's cape. We're rocking the Batman Incorporated skin here too. Looking sick as ever. And look, these dudes want to fight. So now we're just going to have to kick the crap out of them. Of course, we're using the Keaton Mobile too. One of my favorite Batmobiles. And I thought this was such a great idea too when they made this game and they added all the DLC that they didn't just add, you know, Batmobile skins like the ones that they had in the game, like the Rocksteady Batmobile or the Robin themed Batmobile that are all just reskins of the Arkham Knight design that Rocksteady had made for the Batmobile. But they, in fact, went above and beyond and added Batmobiles that you know and love from the movies, even one of them being from a movie that hadn't come out yet when this game was made, being the BVS skin. That blew my mind. I remember requesting the Ben Affleck Batman vs Superman suit, and then also in Dreamland, if they were going to add the Batman vs Superman Batmobile, and they did it. The Mad Lads at Rock City did it, and I couldn't believe when that happened. Founders Island is also a great one to go to if you wanna see some like really cool lighting and stuff. I think also this is the island that has LexCorp, which you gotta wonder, you know, there's some Lex Luthor Easter eggs in Batman Arkham Knight and plenty of Easter eggs to Superman and stuff in the Justice League. And now you wonder, we're going into Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League as the next Rock City Arkhamverse game. Will Lex Luthor appear in it? 
Will there be any references to, of course, having the LexCorp building be in Gotham? You got to wonder if stuff like that's going to be called back to. But yeah, a lot of the neon lighting and, of course, the rain effects just look so good. A huge thank you once again to MSI for sending over the 4070 Ti. I am so happy with the both of them and being able to play games like this. It's awesome. It is so awesome. So huge, huge thank you to them. Please check out all their products. The links for everything is going to be in the description box below. Controls of the Batmobile are just so smooth. I'm just tearing through the streets of Gotham. And the destructible environments too is such a nice touch. I'm really curious as well what some of the DLC looks like with the shaders, with the upgrades to this game. So I want to jump in now into the Red Hood DLC. This is so much fun for me to play. I do wish that there was more here, of course. I mean, with all the DLC that they added into the game, besides Season of Infamy, which was great, I feel like it was missing out on uh, a lot of content. But the Red Hood DLC, just to be able to play as Red Hood, or in this case, the Arkham Knight, I was a big fan. I was a big fan. And also, you know, the way he's, like, very lethal in this game is so good. And his gameplay is very, very sweet. His takedowns look crazy. I mean, look at that. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. And the combat as well. Again, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself, but what else can I say that hasn't been said already at this point about Batman Arkham Knight? If this game came out today and it was worth $70 in its current state, without the shaders, without the upgrades that I had added, it would be worth all that money. Like, let's be honest, okay? A lot of people had big problems with the whole Arkham Knight reveal. I feel it's sort of misunderstood, though, in my personal opinion, at least. Like, I feel like a lot of people misconstrued what Rocksteady was doing with the Arkham Knight reveal and the way that they were trying to keep it hidden. Because yes, okay, we all kind of knew the Arkham Knight was Jason Todd. Everyone had guessed it. But the thing is, if they straight out of the gate were to say, it's Jason Todd, he's Red Hood, Anybody can just Google it and figure out the entire storyline that they're going to try and go forward with. Choosing to make the character the Arkham Knight was a way to kind of retell the Under the Red Hood storyline as you might have remembered it when you first read that graphic novel. Oh man, I always love coming here. Look at the rain. This part of the DLC looked so crazy because it's like super rainy. Like the weather effects are already going nuts. But I mean, it's even more <laughs> insane. When you look at the way that it looks now with these shaders. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I think I made a mistake. I think I made a mistake. Look at the weather effects. Look at this game. Look at the Arkham Knight. I remember too, if you were around when I was covering this game, we were all very disappointed that this skin, the Arkham Knight skin, was not in the game for Red Hood from the jump. I understand a little bit as to why, because of course at the time when we got the game, we didn't know, but it seemed as though that there weren't any plans to add this into the game in any way, shape, or form, and that was incredibly disappointing in my opinion, because I mean, the, the Arkham Knight look, you can, you can debate about whatever you think in regards to, you know, the character and the decision making, but the design is one of the coolest Bat Family designs that we have ever gotten. That cannot be up for debate. But there you have it, a revisit to Batman Arkham Knight after nearly eight years from its original release, and we get a bit of a glimpse as to what a remaster for this game could look like. I think obviously it looks still really good and you can play it on next gen no problem through backwards compatibility, but I feel like we deserve some sort of a next gen port, a 60 FPS update at the very least, because I know a lot of people are missing out on playing this game on PC and being able to play it at above 30 FPS it's glorious. But with that being said, thank you once again to MSI for sending over the 4070 Ti for making all of this possible here in today's video. I hope you guys check out all their products. Their incredible products are going to be linked in the description box below. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. It would show your support and I would really appreciate it. I've been Caboose and I'll see you guys later.